once again. Uh, welcome to a study in the word from, from, from the ministry, from Darkness to Light Ministry. I'm Minister Michael Heron. Join with me tonight is also Bishop Fears and also Minister uh, Griffin. Uh, tonight, we're going to do a study, a brand new study on a biblical understanding of the fivefold ministry. And before we go in, I just want to read the term so I can kind of lay the foundation, kind of give you an introduction to it. And the fivefold ministry is a term referring to the five ministry roles, one of the apostles, one of the prophet, one of the evangelists, the pastor, and the teacher, which are found in the, in the book of Ephesians. And it's the biblical blueprint we are given to equip the, 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 the saints of the church and to grow the kingdom of God. So that's the terminology when we're using what is the fivefold ministry. So I know with this with this subject, there are some beliefs out there that 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 uh, kind of goes against what 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 the scripture. We're just gonna go right to the scripture and let the scripture interpret itself. And there are a lot of questions. That are being asked you know how does it is it relevant all these different things so what we're going to do just starting out i'm going to go to uh minister griffin i'm going to just hey she asked a question and and then we'll just go to the scripture and see what the scripture is saying so welcome minister griffin hi <clears throat> well like you were saying before um there's a lot of questions um con concerning the fivefold ministry and one of the questions that um I know some people have is, is it relevant? Um, is the fivefold ministry relevant for today? Okay. Because Mike, Mike, Minister Michael. Yes. That's a, that's a good question because a lot of people say, you know, there aren't any apostles. There aren't any prophets. I mean, so that's, there's teaching out there, uh, denominational teaching, there's, you know, different things. And, I'm not going to say it's, it, it, they, they say it's biblical. They say it lines up with the Bible, but I think it's an opinionated thing. Yeah. Because um, I think the scripture bears, other, shows us other, otherwise. Yeah. Well, so, so what we're going to do tonight is in, instead of us trying to give people our opinions, let's just go right to the scripture. We, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter four, and we're going to start reading at verse seven. And let's see, let's listen to what the word of God said. Let's just see why. We have the fivefold ministry. Uh, we're going to ask Minister Griffin to start to read. All right. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, starting with verse 7. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scripture says, when he ascended to the height, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Verse 11, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastor and the teachers. So let's just stop right there. Verse 11, well, we can actually go back, um, Minister Mike, how we know that when he ascended, he gave gifts. Amen. And it's clear right there in the text. If you read the text, it said when Jesus Christ ascended upon heights, upon high, he gave gifts. And those gifts he gave, it was, it was, it was through, uh, what's the term you use? It wasn't, you use a term that's specific. I, I, I want people to hear that term. Go back to that and read what it says according to what? According to why he gave gifts? It's in verse seven, Keep, go ahead. However, he has given each one of us special gifts through generosity of Christ. See the word, he used generosity, that's the key. He used generosity, so if the generosity of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ understood and knew that, and I think what people forget is when Jesus Christ, he left, the work of the body of Christ, which is the church, continue. So we need these gifts. So this is what this this is what this scripture is validate. They validate why we need these gifts, so that the work of the body of Jesus Christ, the work of the church, can continue. Bishop, do you want to expound on any of this? Well, see, when people when I read the Bible, I try to go into the text in my mind. I want to try to understand what God is trying to convey to us. Because 
we can get all kind of beliefs and our, based on what we feel, what we want the scripture to say, you know, I always say exegete and eisegete. We can put our spin on it may, based on maybe what region of the planet we came from, uh, what region of the country we came from, and we, we base things on our opinions. But the, the number one thing that I try to tell people when, when I'm teaching is your opinion has to die. You have got to find out what the Holy Spirit was meaning. And you got to use some common sense when you're reading the Bible. And you got to put common sense with what the Spirit shows you from a spiritual perspective. And I, for me, I ask this question. When people start teaching certain things, certain doctrines, I ask them, show me where God stopped doing what verse 7. Show me where God actually stopped. Because God is not a respecter of people. He knew good and well the early church needed structure. Guess what? We really need structure with all this today in the 21st century. So are you telling me that God got a little God? Are you telling me God's system kind of like shifted a little bit to where, well, they don't need apostles, they don't need prophets. Um, we just stick with evangelists and pastors. No. I mean, I, I don't I don't see that in, in just in this text by itself. Amen. But it's obvious to me that every generation. Just like every child need to be need to be taught. You can't say, well, babies that are born in the first centuries, we give it to them. But all those that are thereafter, they're on their own. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit the narrative. Amen. Amen. And people got to understand, too, that that's a good point you bring up because you got to understand when we come into Christianity, when we accept Jesus Christ by faith, we're coming in ignorant. So without these gifts, <laughs> Without these gifts, which we need, we need these gifts. And it's for to equip us. Well, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. We're, it's it's more so their offices. These, these it, are offices that yeah, God. These we, are offices. It, we'll break that down later. Mm -hmm. So, but just remember when we come, see, people think you got to understand we were already born with a sin nature. So we need the word of God to renew our minds. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have to study it according to what. Timothy says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So when you come out of sin, you don't know everything but sin. You, your flesh, you, that's all you want to do. You take self with you. So this is why this is a renewing. How you renew your mind, you begin to study. You begin to meditate on God's word. Amen. And then when you get saved, the Holy Spirit will come in and will give you that revelation. So let's continue reading. Let's go down to... Uh, Let's, let's go ahead and, and, and uh, Minister Griffin, continue the reading. Let's go to, uh, let's start with 10. Let's read 10 and 11 together. Let's start with verse 10 and 11 together. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Mm -hmm. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, the pastors and teachers. And do you want to go into what their responsibility is? Yeah, go in there too. But before, but can we just back up? Because back. I, I don't want to, I don't want us to go too fast. Um, like the bishop was saying, some doctrines they teach um, contrary to this, what we're what we're teaching on now as far as the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. And some even use First Corinthians 13, verse 9 through 10, saying, um, for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. So what do you what do you say, Minister Mike? How do you speak to that when they said when that which is perfect has come, they believe that all the the offices of the fivefold ministry will be done away with? Okay. Well, it, it, we got again, once again, we got to stick with scripture. We I, I don't want to get into people's opinions. I don't want to get into what they say when it talks about that, which is perfect has come. Look at it like this. Has Jesus Christ established his kingdom upon this earth right now? Is there true order upon this earth? Is the government now upon his shoulder? Are we in the full measure of Jesus Christ? In other words, are we in the unity of the faith? We got people out there with different denominations saying, well, you ain't, you ain't saved unless you speak in tongues. Oh, you ain't saved unless you're being baptized in the water. So we we under the auspices that perfection has been established in the church. Is this what we really believe? Think about it now. 
We, we got all kinds of doctrines all over the place. This is why we're doing this teaching. So you think we don't need a prophet? A, a prophet gets his revelation from God. But a prophet also takes God's words and he studies it. And what it does is the prophet, the revelation not aligns up with God's word because God's word is true. Apostle goes ahead and build. He is the one that builds. He say he is the foundation that you need when you build churches. So, so if we just took it from that standpoint right there, that which is perfect has come. We we see right now we are not, and you got to understand when the scripture is talking. It's talking about men walking into their full maturity. We are not spiritually mature yet, Amen. <laughs> and that won't happen. That will again. Listen, that will not happen until we have our glorified bodies. And you know, Michael, I want to say something. Go ahead. Go ahead People get stuck in their <laughs> theology because of their own opinionated views. Mm -hmm. And you can you can be properly exegeting a scripture biblically, and then all of a sudden you get into what I see. I see mm -hmm. because of what you like and what you don't like. You know what may be strange to you. You may say, "Well, I don't like. I don't think God that. Well, there can't be an evangelist." I mean, there can't be any more apostles because in order for you to be an apostle, you've got to see Jesus. Mm. And people don't understand the reason when they wrote the canon, they put people that had a firsthand revelation from Jesus. It wasn't that God, I don't see what God says, I stopped doing certain things, right. but people get stuck and they're teaching and they get all twisted up and they don't understand and then they begin to put uh, blocks on God and telling God what he don't do and what Amen. he can't do. When in Michael, what you said, it doesn't make sense to me to say that we don't have those people that govern the church. We, apostles govern. They help the church govern. They got the, It's in them. Paul, remember when God anointed certain men to get the temple, when he was getting the temple ready and they was getting the temple made? You know, everybody just can't go up there and have the designs and make the make the, the garments and all that stuff. But God said, I'm going to put this in them. So so there are certain people that are fire starters. They start fires. It doesn't mean that they're better, but this is something that is divinely given by God to govern. They can go into a place and start seeing stuff that you don't even see. And they'd be saying, well, this is not right. This is not order. And it's, they just know, but it's God. It's an evidence that there is a God inside of them. And he Amen. buried that thing in them. But Amen. when people, people don't like that because it doesn't fit their interpretation of the scripture. And Amen. then Lord knows prophets, they don't want to hear them about prophets because prophets say things, they reveal things. So what, what people do that don't like the prophets, they'll, they'll tell you, well, they're, they're done away with because they don't want nothing to happen that can mess up the text because they don't want somebody like you know, Joseph Smith come along or uh, one of them guys, there's a guru come along and start saying, well, God is saying this now. But they don't have to be afraid because a true prophet is going to speak and it's going to line up with the word. Amen. You know, Amen. it'll always line up with the word. So, but I think out of fear and people dislike the office of the prophet and they dislike the, the, the apostles because they don't they just don't that's their belief but but there is error it is really error because you're telling god he don't appoint these no more and and i don't see nowhere in the scripture where god stopped appointing them he didn't say well for for the first century they're going to have this but as y'all go on y'all figure it out we like you said it well in the beginning we need we need help man the church Amen. well Amen. Matter of fact, I'm going to read a scripture to you to show you that God, my God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Now, this is in Romans. This is in the book of Romans. This is the book of Romans, uh, chapter 11, verse 29. Now, listen what it said. <laughs> it said, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, meaning that when God pours in, Jesus Christ ascended, it was through almighty God because of Jesus Christ's work. So, because all of the universe got to come into order. And Jesus Christ is the foundation for that order. So, when Jesus ascended, that's why I say he gave gifts and called them, and he put it and gave it upon all men. Mm -hmm. And so, God is the one. God is, remember, again, God is the one. And God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He has not changed. So, he, when these gifts and calling come down upon people, 
The Bible says God does not change his mind. He doesn't take them away from you. And Michael, he's not, a, he's not a respecter of people neither. Amen. So what he did for them, he'll do for us. Amen. He's still doing it. He's still doing it today. Uh, let's go back to Minister Griffin. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure there's some other questions that can come to your mind too you may want to ask that some people may be thinking. Well, some people may ask the question, and I think we'll get into it um, in verse 12 and 13, but what is the responsibility of the offices of the fivefold ministry? So would you like to go into verse 12? Yeah, let's go ahead and read verse 12 so we can okay. see what it says. It says, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Amen. Mm. Now, we're going to go back to verse 12. Now, I want you to read that again because verse 12 gives you the foundation. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Start right there. Now, whose responsibility is it? The, the previous scripture tell you whose responsibility it is to do this. Whose responsibility is to do this again? Let's go back and read that, that scripture above the scripture, verse 11 there, Stephen. Read the it. apostle, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastor, and the teachers. Okay, so their responsibility again is for the equipping the saints to do the service, to do the work of the ministry, whatever you want to call it, to do that. Okay, and it's also to build each other up. Okay, it's to build up the body of Jesus Christ. You want to expound on that, Bishop? I think people don't understand how, I think people forget that Satan, Satan, remember, Satan, the Bible says Satan is the God of this world. Satan is the prince of the power of the, of the air. And so people have to understand he is still operating. You know, we got false prophets. We got false teachers. So, Here's where the giftings and the callings come in. We got, we got people. equipped us so we can have order in the church. So people can be adequately trained and equipped. So they know to go out, I got to carry this gospel out. But when I carry this gospel out, the word of God is my litmus test. I cannot compromise. I cannot be tolerant. The litmus test, the standard is, is the word of God. And when I go forth, I got to be equipped and trained. So I got to be adequately equipped and training. And this is the purpose of the fivefold ministry. If you go and out, Michael, vision. and you look at the world, I, I just don't understand how the people of God, we get so bent out of shape. It's so grievous at times. Um, the world, God has a system. And he hasn't changed his system. Systems work. I've been working in the world for 40 years. And I am telling you, at least, well, I won't say 40, but at least uh, 37 years, maybe. I got a job at 13, so. <laughs> but, but systems, and you know what? They work. I was in the military 20 years, and we had a system. We had, we had those that, set, that governed us. We had those that, 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 that um, guided us. We had those that gathered us. We had those that guarded us. You know, we had first sergeants. You know what I'm saying? But so, so um, I think the church gets too religious and some of us are get too analytical and we wanna, because like I said earlier, we don't like the prophets because you can get anybody coming up saying they're a prophet and they can start saying things to confuse people. So somebody down in, our, in the history of the church eliminated them. Said, no, they don't need them no more. But mm -hmm. God never said that. But mm -hmm. that's just somebody in their teaching did that, just like the apostles. But the truth of the matter is, Michael, man, I can only imagine if we didn't have an admiral, if we didn't have a captain, if we didn't have a first sergeant, what kind of system would our military be? Mm -hmm. So the church, why come, why is it so difficult for people to accept the fact? that God has set up a system that works. It, if we work it, the problem that I have with the system is that some people take and abuse it. 
and they mm -hmm. begin to be make people be subservient to them. You know, the apostle comes in the church, uh, then uh, the, the, the evangelists come in or whoever, and we make them higher than everybody else. And that's wrong. That's that's not what God intended. In fact, God said those that are going to be in the highest have got to be the servants. But, you know, we want to throw the, throw the baby out with the water because we don't agree with some things. But the truth of the matter is we need the fivefold ministry in more, my Lord, we need it more than ever in the 21st century. As you were saying, Michael, with all these uh, erroneous teachings out there, all these different uh, theories that are out there, just look at the church with this coronavirus thing. We are all in left field with our beliefs. You got mm -hmm. people, I'm, I'm, I am tired of getting emails and videos of stuff I don't, I, I want to delete. I don't want anybody sending me at this point. I don't need no more. Somebody trying to prove to me, you know, the teach, my teachers, the Holy Ghost and people sending out false, they sending out, they, they uh, uh, what's that word I'm trying to think of? They taking information and they put it out there. Mm. You know, people telling me, some people say the coronavirus, is a setup, and some people say it's this, and some people say it's that. The truth of the matter is that's I'm not even concerned about that because we know what's going to happen at the end time. We're in mm -hmm. the end times. Amen. But you need leadership in the church now that's going to speak <laughs> on stuff like this, so we can calm the nerves of people and tell them stop. God is on the throne. He has given us these offices to to, to keep order. And help us, like you said, Michael, get developed. Amen. Again, just to remind people, what we're doing once again here, tonight's study is this is a biblical understanding of the fivefold ministry. And we're coming from Ephesians chapter 4. And we started with verse 7. And we are reading through verse 13. And where we are right now, we're talking about the foundational purpose to why God called his gifts and calling when it comes to apostles and it comes to prophets and when it comes to evangelists and pastors and teachers, why God gave his gifts and callings upon them. And here's the foundation. The foundational reason is, again, their responsibility, the, the ones I mentioned, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work. What does God work in the end times? What does he, what do he want? He wants us to bring souls into the kingdom. So if we ain't adequately trained and equipped to do that, guess what? If we go out there and we're trying to bring souls in and say we're not we're not studied in God's word, and they ask a question, and we sound confused. Because the Bible said the devil, Satan is the author of confusion, but say we sound confused. Guess what? We done lost that person. Minister Mike. We the right answer. Amen. So we again we're talking about. A biblical understanding of the fivefold ministry and, and, and the foundation here's the foundations is one is to equip God's people to do the work, and secondly, it is to build up the church, the body of Christ. Now, at that point, this is what I want people to understand who is the head of the church? Jesus Christ. The church was birthed out of him, okay? <laughs> so in order for him, when he died, he was atonement for our sin. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, he was an atonement for our sin. This is the way it works. When he ascended, and then he descended back into the earthen realm, what happens? God said, okay, now, I'm about to equip. I'm going to give them these gifts and these callings because of Jesus Christ, because I'm shedding the blood on the cross. Now, I understand they need this. Because we are in spiritual warfare. We're in battle. And I got to make sure that I have this fivefold ministry so we can now bring people into the kingdom of God. Because when you come into the kingdom of God, understand, you're coming out of sin. You're coming out of darkness. So you don't understand God's word anyway. So that's why he had the fivefold ministry. And it's for the building up of the church. We're building them up. The numbers are coming in. More people give their life to Jesus Christ is being built up, but you got to build them up correctly. And this is why you need to teach it. This is why you need to be equipped. This is why you need to be trained. Amen. You want to add to that, uh, uh, Bishop? Uh, Do you have a question, uh, Minister? Yeah. Um, no, I was just going to add when Minister Mike said that um, people have to be equipped to go out 
not only do you have to be equipped to go out so you can bring a harvest in, but you should ask yourself a question. If these offices were done away with, then when you bring the harvest in, who is going to disciple them? Who is going to teach them? Who is going to help them to understand their gift? Who is going to be able to teach them? That's why we have a need for the fivefold ministry. If you go out into the streets and you bring in 200 people off the streets that don't know Christ and you just put them in a building, you got to have some type of order. You got to have some type of organization. You got to have someone to teach them and explain to them the word and help them to get understanding so that they'll be able to learn how to walk this thing out. I mean, we just can't say, well, these offices are done away with because like the scripture said, we're, we're not perfect. We're not mature in Christ and maturing takes growth. You have people out there, they're not already mature. It's just like when you give birth to a child, that child doesn't already know how to operate or do things. They have to be taught. They have to be raised up. So that is the reason why we really have a real need for the fivefold ministry and why it is relevant today. Because, I mean, it's such a need, especially right now. And mm -hmm. I want to touch on what Bishop said earlier, because a lot of times I think people have gotten hurt by um, leadership. So they have a negative opinion about it and negative connotation but we still have to go back to what the word says. You always gonna have like bad apples in a bunch, but you just can't throw the whole basket away because everybody is not operating like that. And you have to remember to always put God first and not replace the leader with God. Because when you do that, now you're getting over into idolatry. And a lot of times people bow down, you know, to people that have titles and it just becomes a thing where God is, you know, put in the on the back burner. And I mean, we have had this type of teaching, and that's why I'm so thankful for us being able to discuss the fivefold ministry um, in this series and explain to people because that way people can learn and and grow from it and be able to understand it, especially now with what's going on when we get ready to go back to the new norm then you'll have a better understanding and then you can, you know, operate differently, serve differently. Amen. Amen. That, that's a very good point because an evangelist have a calling on them to bring them in, but he may not have a calling on the government people. So that's why you need the apostle. You see what I'm saying? So, so God knows exactly why he have the fivefold ministry. And that's the key is what you're saying. I want to uh, add one thing. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bishop. I know we we short up, we about to yeah. run out of time. We got only a few minutes. Few minutes left. But what I want to say is, as a whole, man, we have to see everything is not the pastor. So we we are taught that everything is the pastor, and that's why we burn these men and women out, man. We put too much on them, and we just throw away. We threw away the prophet. We threw away the evangelist and some of our service services, and um, it's wrong. And we and that's why we error, and that's why we have all these problems. And you can't be afraid of these gifts. You just have to have somebody to govern them, to set up structure. And that's all I want to say, because you're right, Stephanie. You're right, Michael. These are necessary. If we're going to, to do what God calls us to do, I believe God has given us a great opportunity through this coronavirus, whether the, whether it's the conspiracies or what. I don't, I'm not focused on what people are focused on. Carnal Christians focus on all the stuff that the world is showing and all the, the texts. But you know what? a mature Christian is focused on? God, this is an opportunity. How do you want me to do what you call me to do? Amen. And how do I fit into the body of Christ? And everybody's spinning their wheels and passing all these, these emails and messenger and all, posting up all these things about the corona and this, but I don't see many people. I, don't, I see very few people helping people be equipped. This is an opportunity for the church to shine. I believe there's gonna be an outpouring as a result of what God has allowed. And I'm not focused on all the conspiracy. I'm not focused on what the devil is doing. I'm not focused on what the world is doing. I'm not focused on the conspiracy. I don't care if they're true or false. I know one thing that God caused the earth to pause for a reason. And if that is what he did, 
What are we to do? Keep posting these things out. Keep telling people to be afraid. Keep just, man, we are supposed to light this planet up right about now. That is all. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I, I thank you guys for joining us tonight. Uh, this is going to conclude, but, but tune in with us next week. And we're going to continue to study on the biblical understanding of the fivefold ministry. And we're going to start breaking down some of the, what, what the apostle does, what, what the prophet do. And we're going to break all these things because the bishop says some very, what we do is we, we cast them to a side and then we put all the burden on the pastor. And we wonder, I talked to my brother tonight. He said the pastor they have is over 80 churches. You imagine how he's been pulled in these different directions. That, that's why we need the fivefold ministry, amen? So, again, I'm Minister Michael Harris. Uh, I'm joined again tonight with Bishop Fears and also Minister Griffin. And we thank you for being with us. Uh, we are from the ministry, from Darkness to Light Ministry, and we are a voice from darkness to light.